language, mathematics. What if I told you that was all you needed to describe the world? <laughs> Heck, rule the world. You see, Roger loves words and Dodger loves numbers. Together they could rise as gods, ascend to the highest power and reign over what is rightfully theirs. The improbable road to the impossible city is open. Are you ready to walk it? <laughs> he was the voice in her head, the reason she learned to read for meaning as well as for superficial content, her best friend and the thing that kept her sane. Hello everyone, it's AG and today I will be talking about Middle Game by Shannon Maguire. This has become my favourite book of all time and I could not recommend it enough. I just wanted to give Tor.com a sincere thank you for sending over this copy. This was the book I've been searching for my entire life. Beforehand, I would just like to give a trigger warning because this book does contain some scenes concerning suicide, but I won't be talking about that explicitly in this review. Anyway, oh my gosh, this book was so good and I actually had a bit of troubles trying to figure out how to review it properly because I personally felt that discovering the story in and of itself was such an amazing adventure and I didn't want to take that away from anyone. So I hope that despite me leaving a lot of things out, I will still be able to do it justice. Either way, let's get started. Middle Game is a story about a pair of twins called Roger and Dodger. Roger is very good with words. He loves to read and learn new languages. The thing is, he's really poor at mathematics. On the other hand, you have Dodger, who is practically a wizard with numbers, but absolutely rubbish when it comes to anything that has to do with language. Although very different, Roger and Dodger seem to be a perfect match. They are best friends and they complement each other perfectly. But this isn't a coincidence. What they don't realize is that they're not really human. They're also not gods, at least not entirely not yet. You see, Roger and Dodger were created by a skilled alchemist called James Reed. Reed's plan is to raise them to the highest power, ascend with them and claim their authority as his own. So that is in a nutshell what this book is about, but it is so much more. It is characterized as a dark fantasy slash science fiction book and I honestly could not have wished for anything more in a story. It was so original and the influences were so rich. Like I said before, this has become my favourite book of all time. I am a mathematician and to a certain extent also consider myself a linguist. So this book resonated with me on so many levels, seeing that the central themes were both mathematics and languages. And honestly, I think that even if you're not a fantasy or sci-fi person, you'll still be able to really enjoy the story just due to the phenomenal writing. To me, Maguire always seems to have this amazing quality in her writing and it's hard not to notice. Now, the book had a very unique structure, which I absolutely loved. It is told in the chronologically correct order, save for the seventh book, which is interjected in between some of the others. At first, I didn't understand why that was done specifically, other than to create questions for you to chase throughout the story. But in hindsight, it was incredibly important for the flow of the book and the atmosphere. There were so many gaps throughout the book that I was constantly searching for clues to see how every single piece fit. This and the constant tension kept me reading like a maniac and I ripped through the last 300 plus pages in one sitting. The book was written from the perspective of an omniscient narrator so there was a lot of forebading which made it even darker and I just loved that. The story actually starts off with book 7 called The End and I will read a short snippet. Philia. Timeline. 5 minutes too late, 30 seconds from the end of the world. There is so much blood. 
Roger didn't know there was this much blood in the human body. It seems impossible, ridiculous, a profligate waste of something that should be precious and rare, and most importantly, contained. This blood belonged inside the body where it began, and yet it is here, and here he is, and everything is going so wrong. Just having read that small part, I was sold. It was so ominous and dark, and it just set up the book very well. The rest of the chapter is great as well. Roger and Dodger seem to be on this battlefield, barely holding on to life, and they're trying to get to somewhere called the Impossible City. After the first chapter, the story continues with the backstory of Reed. This had a really strong Frankenstein vibe, and it quickly progressed to a more contemporary story focusing on Roger and Dodger. In the rest of the book, you get to see how the twins grow up and how their powers develop, whilst Reed continues his quest for divinity. I loved seeing Roger and Dodger grow up. As babies, they were adopted and placed into separate homes, each on the other side of the country, forced to grow up separately without the knowledge of one another. At the age of seven, however, they managed to connect in a very special way, and just about everything about that was so freaking awesome. Over the course of the story, I grew so attached to them. I got to see how they slowly went from innocent little children to full-grown adults with unique personalities. I like them both for different things. Roger, of course, for his love for reading and languages, and Dodger for being such a badass mathematician and chess player. I actually started playing chess because of this book and it has become my newest obsession. Their bond as siblings and love for one another was so beautiful, I just loved reading about it. As kids, they were outcasts, and due to their loneliness, they became extremely close. I also really liked how Maguire made Roger very sensitive as a child. This is definitely a trait that is often seen as a sign of weakness when it comes to men, and so it was great to see such a male character. I actually think that with both characters, Maguire was challenging gender roles in the sense that when women or girls are intelligent and interested in science, they are often met with a lot of resistance. And here you have Dodger, who is so smart and never tries to hide her intelligence. I just felt that that was very empowering. Like I said before, there were so many influences, and I'm sure that a lot of them just flew right over my head, but that was actually something I really liked about the book. I feel like it's a type of story that if you'd pick it up again, you'd always be able to find new things and just have a completely different experience. For instance, if you'd read The Midwich Cuckoos by John Wyndham and then come back to the story, you'd see so many more clues, especially when it comes to metaphors and other types of wordplay. The only thing that I felt that was a bit of a shame was that the last 50 pages, compared to the rest of the book, kind of lost a bit of its spunk. But I, of course, could not give this book anything less than five stars after reading 400 plus pages of... <sighs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm not really the type of person who likes to hype up books, but this one honestly spoke so loudly to the core of my being. And I know that sounds extremely dramatic and like I'm exaggerating, but that honestly is the truth. Anyway, that was everything I had to say with regards to Middle Game. Let me know if you've read it or if you'd like to read it. And if you would like to read it, I have left a link in the description box to the Tor.com page that contains the first five chapters. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video.